Mr. Minchesti is inspired by his new Spider-Man video game. And he decides to climb to the top of the Empire State Building in his Spider-Man costume, a.k.a. his pajamas. But as he reaches the top, a penny falls out of his wallet and falls to the ground below. The Empire State Building is 443.2 meters tall to the very tippy top. I want to know, A, how long till the penny hits the ground? And B, what is the velocity when it strikes the ground? So, let's go ahead and write out our equations. S equals XI plus VIT plus, say it with me, 1 half AT squared. And A is equal to VF minus VI over T. And let's list out our variables. S, XI, VI. B, F, A, and T. Say it like a superhero, why don't you? Okay. All right. So now that our variables are set up, let's go ahead and see what we know. We know that Mr. Michewski is in a Spider-Man suit. I don't know how that helps us with the physics, but I certainly like to keep the image in my head. The tip of the Empire State Building is 443.2 meters. So let's say S is 443.2 meters. Let's make our xi zero, and let's just draw a little picture just to visualize this one, since this is our first free fall problem. So, and he's climbed up to the tip right here, and the penny drops out, comes to the ground. So, for a problem like this, because every, all of the motion is downwards, I'm going to prefer to set my reference point right here, zero meters. And that's going to make the floor 443.2. And in order to make this easier on myself, I'm going to make everything going down positive. So then I don't have to deal with any negative numbers. The other way to do this would be to set the ground as zero, the top is 443.2. You can set your reference being upwards, and then everything's going to be negative going towards zero. So, either way, it'll work out the same, the math will work the same. You just have to keep your integers straight. And I'm bad at that, so I don't do it. So, what else do I know? I know that the penny doesn't start falling until it falls out of his pocket, so the initial velocity must be zero. Something doesn't start falling until I let it go. So, VI is zero. And the other thing I know, and this is true in all free fall problems, is I know that my acceleration is due to an outside force of gravity. Now, in this, we're on the Earth. So gravity on the Earth is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. So I want to know, how long does it take the penny to hit the ground? Well, S equals XI plus VIT plus 1 half AT squared. I know S, I know XI, I know VI, and I know A, so I can solve quite easily for T. So, S equals XI plus VIT plus 1 half AT squared. Now, as I have in the past, I'm going to go ahead and work this until I am comfortable putting the numbers in. So, simplifying it down, xi being 0 gets rid of it. vi being 0 drops it right out. So, I'm left with s equals 1 half at squared. Easy peasy. So, my a is 9.8. My s is 443.2. One half nine point eight a squared. One half times nine point eight is four point nine. It's a common enough calculation that we do. You will end up memorizing this one. So four point nine t squared equals four four three point two. That's the extent of what I can do in my head. So first. 
We're going to divide both sides by 4.9 to get the t squared on its own. So we're going to do 443.2 divided by 4.9. And we come out with a nice 90.45 equals t squared. So t squared, I think we need to square root both sides. Square root, and we come out with 9.5. Can draw a better five than that. 9.5t. So let's put that on our variable list. 9.5 seconds. Box it off so my instructor knows what my answer is and move on. So that was A. What about B? What is the velocity when it strikes the ground? So, I know time, I know acceleration, I know my initial velocity, that's going to be really easy to solve. So, if we remember, rearranging this is going to be a t plus vi equals vf. Remember, vi is zero, drop it out. So, a and t, 9.8 times 9.5. That's going to be 90. 3.1 degrees per second for final velocity. Let's go ahead and write it in. 93.1 meters per second. Box it right off. And there we go. There are the answers to this problem. Now, if you notice here, I had a really easy time plugging these numbers in and figuring it out. And it's not just because I've done this so many times. It's because I took the time to organize my problem. So once I had this set up, all I had to do was look over and punch the numbers into my calculator. Makes it a lot easier. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.